This family has brought these goats to be slaughtered. So the workers of this makeshift slaughterhouse will prepare for it. Berma will cut these used car ties in circular shapes. He will tie them with a wire and together with some dry wood, he will set the fire for the roast. Soon, the goat is killed and thrown into the fire. Berme's colleague will work on the goat in this burning furnace for a couple of minutes until it is well burnt and cooked. This is done for several minutes amid thick smoke billowing in the area. Though the workers here are aware of the health and environmental risk that comes with it, they claim that's the only option available for their trade. Makeshift slaughterhouses are dotted around the country amid the environmental and health concerns anyways. So to understand how others do it, we head to a jiso where we meet pig farmer George J. He hangs a small weighing scale on this tree to give it the needed balance as he starts the process to slaughter some pigs for his customers. He is helped by some farm hands for this task. So, for our own, that is how best we are doing to manage. We, we, we know for sure that there's more room for improvement and that if we can get a modernized uh, uh, slaughterhouse or abattoir, it's, it will work to our own good and then also benefit the, the buyers in terms of uh, keeping the animal clean and making the environment quiet, hygienic. We, we understand that, but in the current circumstances, that's what we are managing. That's what we are managing. And the Environmental uh, Protection Agency to their, their officer, one of their officers is also good. I think that's his area of speciality. When he comes around, he takes us through Every day he comes, he tries to remind us, if you see the animal in this condition, be very cautious. Better than Berma and his colleagues, over here, the carcass is singed after the kill before it is cut into sizes. No ties are used here. So I asked, why this makeshift and not a proper slaughterhouse? That effect. So we also engage them saying, how can't you provide us means of transportation? To the said slaughterhouse which is far away from this environment secondly in the current circumstances that slaughterhouse is operating between the hours of 4 a.m and 7 7 30 a.m which is very difficult for us to operate because uh, the pig farming unlike those who normally slaughter cattle or goats they have fixed the number of animals they are slaughtering a day but the piggery we don't have it's as at when. When we are here and somebody comes, he wants to slaughter. And mostly, they will come around 8, 9, 10, sometimes evening, 3 thereabout, by which time the slaughterhouse is already closed. Uh, we, we are also aware that most often the slaughterhouse are managed or manned by our brothers Muslims. And pig, for instance, has its uh, religious, uh, uh, how do I put it, uh, some religious misunderstanding. We are also careful not to be uh, hurting other people's religious belief or faith. So that's also another issue. So if there will be a slaughterhouse, we would have, would have preferred that we have entirely separate, quite distant separate slaughterhouse for piggery and then other animals which is generally accepted by all across the uh, religious faith or beliefs separate from each other. Though George is aware of the sanitary concerns of how he slaughters his animals, he has some reasons for his actions. For here, with the pigs, we, we've totally abolished the use of uh, tires, the, 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 the worn out tires of cars. We don't use it at all. So we use the gas and then we have two set of tables here. So after uh, uh, dealing with it in terms of using the gas to uh, take off uh, the skin and then you put it on the wooden table then they, they will use the silver sponge 
that the ladies use to clean the utensils to clean it and then make it nice look uh, clean so for now that's what we are managing in the midst of this the public health act meanwhile enjoys anybody who wants to slaughter an animal to do so in a proper slaughterhouse or an abattoir so we head to the Kumasi abattoir to understand how things are done in the proper way we are inside the slaughterhouse of one of the biggest slaughtering company in Ghana. Today on Food Chain, myself and Mona Lisa from Paul will be taking you through the meat slaughtering processes here at the Kumasi Abattoir and how meats are kept wholesome for the consuming public. Stay with us. Here, the animal is first inspected by a veterinary health officer who does the anti mortem checks and passes it as wholesome if satisfied. The carcass is then hinged on some shackles and hooks where the flaying begins, which is to remove the skin to prevent contamination. Then, debunking, which is to remove the tail and is set in the anus, meant to prevent contamination from a spillover from the intestines. They then continue peeling off the skin from the carcass. It then gets to the hide pulling station. At this point, the butchers split the chest area in order to access the vital organs. This is where the veterinary health officer inspects again and checks the organs before passing it as wholesome or not. After it is passed, it is then divided into four equal parts which is referred towards the cuttering stage. So I see 80 written on it. What does it mean? Uh, that, that's the, uh, the identification number of the carcass. So it is used for traceability. Intermittently, the carcass is cleansed to do away with the blood. The floor area of the abattoir is also washed with clean water. After which, it goes to the cold room for temporary storage. So this is the cold room of the Kumase Abattoir, currently um, around minus 10 degrees Celsius. And at this point in time, we realize that some uh, persons are tagging the carcasses in here. Um, this place is one of the points of calls when um, the carcass will be ready for uh, the public consumption. From here, it moves out to the um, uh, butchers who are ready to carry them to the consuming public. So I will be speaking to some of the uh, production managers here to understand how things are done in this place. It is manos 8 to 10. But we are supposed to convey everything into this tree. Then the next day we will release it. By that time, you see the meat, the meat will become tender. And uh, some of the organisms that can survive in the chain system. Okay. You understand? Okay. They will release the meat for the next day for it to go to the market. But we have studied the market and we have realized that Ghanaians want fresh meat. Okay. So that is why we sort of release the meat today for sale. Because sometimes you at outside there you can see that we sort of an animal. The animal is hanging, though we have divided it into four equal parts. But uh, they, there's always some reactions. Okay. The local material has not taken place. So if regular materials are not taking place, you just cut and put your, your, your pot and you begin to cook. We, as at the meat industry, we think that is not good meat practices. So all things being equal, even if you buy your fresh meat, you can even put it in your normal freezer for about seven to eight hours or six hours, then you can use it. That one, you gain more benefits than the fresh. Well, I say fresh is not good, but in the normal meat practices, it is supposed to be preserved in a chain condition. You advise to those who um, kill their animals and their carcass in their homes and want to put it in their freezer, how long must it, must it stay in the freezer? What would be your advice? If it, and the are good, so you're not supposed to slaughter an animal in your house because you don't even know whether the carcass is suffering from a disease. Or not. Or not. So you don't even, you're not supposed to do that okay. in the first place. All right. So I have debunked that idea for sorting your animal in the house. You have to bring it here for us to ascertain whether the carcass is wholesome for consumption. That, okay. is, that is the most key. You understand? Okay. You sort of, you are a layman, you are a journalist. You don't know anything about disease carcasses. You understand? So you consume it, you think you are alright, but in a way, if you, apart from the, the wholesomeness, 
or the uh, better instruction, you even from the law of Ghana, for certain outside uh, a renowned or a registered proper houses. So it's good the meat has to be inspected and to be free from this wholesome. Okay. Okay. All right. That, that's the idea. The avatar in recent years has started processing some of the meat into processed food meant to increase revenue. The butchers will from here sell to consumers like McBank's restaurants. So meat continues, will continue to be the main protein source in every Ghanaian delicacy. As a result, the per capita meat consumption continues to increase by the day. Some may consider where the meat comes from before they consume, but others do not care. We are still here at the Kumasi Abattoir. My name is Prince Apia. We'll be speaking now to the managing director of the Kumasi Abattoir, Mr. Joe. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us on Food Chain on Joy You're Business. Welcome. Okay, so first and foremost, you've been in charge of the Kumasi Abattoir for the past 10 years. Yes. We know that the Abattoir relies a lot on uh, cattle yeah. and pigs yes. uh, to slaughter here. Yeah. Where do you get your um, supplies from? <laughs> yeah okay it's true we rely mostly on the cattle and then the pigs but most of our cattle are from the saharan lands that is uh, Burkina faso Mali, and then niger these are the places that we are getting our animals from and you know um, it's now becoming costly it's becoming costly in the sense that uh, 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 the foreign exchange comes in because uh, we know the, the Saharan lands are using silver. So at any point in time, they have to convert the city into silver before we can buy. That's why we are not getting any mass nowadays like we used to do. Um, what about the local? Uh, yeah, we'd, we'd, we do have the local animals. Uh, we call them West African horns, the short, short ones. They are very meaty. Even the local ones are very meaty, more than the Saharian ones. Uh, you know, the local ones, uh, we don't have large, large branches. They have their pastoral type of ranching. Uh, like, for instance, a family will have about 50 to 100 animals, but they don't, slot, uh, they don't sell them all. What they do is that when they are hard up, then they, 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 they sell about two, three, or 10 animals out of what they have. So it's a type of pastoral. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's there to when there's a problem, then they catch one and go and sell. Uh -huh. But you know, about what we slaughter every day, there is no even holiday for us. So we need animals every day. And then the butchers have to come and sell, and we, we eat meat every day. So we've been, we've been slaughtering every day. Uh, I don't think uh, the northern sector animals or the local animals can feed. Uh, abattoir all the time. That is why we are getting more. And we have seasons. We have seasons. Um, Sometimes, just now, we are not getting those ones from raining time. We get those ones from the northern sector, the West African horns, the one I said they are meeting. Getting to somewhere uh, uh, now, it's really small. But by September, October, the rains will stop. And then we will start getting, in fact, we are still getting, but we will continue getting animals from Saharian lands, Mali, uh, Burkina Faso, and then Niger. What's the capacity of the... Of, 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 actually, uh, if we are slaughtering, we have two lines for the cattle. We, we can slaughter 500 animals in a day. You can't slaughter 500? Yes, but we are not getting here. So, so how many animals are you slaughtering? At the moment, we are slaughtering around uh, averagely 130, 140 animals. That is below the capacity? Yes, below the capacity. At this point, you get so much of the animals from the Saharan countries. Yes. In addition to the local production. Yes. And you still are not able to yeah. meet them. Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, you see, um, the decentralizations of the local government where some of them are now getting out of 
uh, some municipalities. Our problem now is that even though it's good government side, but it's affecting uh, Kumasi Abatwa in the sense that now we have uh, Swami, we have uh, uh, some places like uh, Swami. They are slaughtering there. They have put, I mean, they put on some slaughtering house there. So those from Swami are no more coming here. Aha. Uh -huh. And then we used to slaughter animals from even the quiet people who used to come here. But nowadays they are not coming. Um, so, and, and you are saying that it's because of the one. One point is that is one, but but the main challenge is that the the animals from Syrian lands are costly, and the safer. Uh, I mean, it's a foreign exchange type of business. Yeah, it's not regular. And, and now that you are producing the low capacity, these are the um, animals that will help you reach your capacity. Yeah, that, that is why. Uh, we, we, we subscribe to uh, the, 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 the government flagship that uh, uh, really animals for export and then for food. Uh, for we have even applied that uh, it's time for uh, Ghanaians to have uh, big baby ranches where we can, we, can, we can rear our own animals here so that in the near future, if you are not careful, we won't get animals from. Because they also they will have a problem. Yeah. Recently, you know, there was a problem in Burkina Faso. Uh -huh. That's the unrest, yeah. yes, and that brought us some hardship in the sense that uh, no car was coming from Burkina Faso until some somewhere along the land uh, things become normalized. That's what we are getting some now. So, so in a month, let's see how much do you spend on um, bringing these um, animals into into your. No, we don't bring them. Uh, there are some middlemen also who are trading in that. We yeah. have traders for that one. For instance, in Kumasi Abatwa. We have the butchers, we have the landlords, and you see so, so many societies are here. Yeah. When you come to Kumasi Abatua, you see that in the morning, over 3,000 people do come here to come and work to find their daily bread. Mm -hmm. So this place is a city uh, of itself. So Kumasi Abatua, we, do, we, we don't rely on even the uh, uh, butchers. The landlords are there. The animals from outside, when they come in, or the animals they are coming to transport or come to sell, when they come in, they have their landlords because they come and stay here for long. So they give out to the landlords and they will sell to the butchers and then they will, the butchers will buy and come and slaughter. Because we are, uh, this thing is that we only slaughter and okay. then we service that one and we charge them. Yeah. And then you were talking about um, the fact that we will need um, enough big, big, big um, ranches in the, in the country yes. and yeah. that would help address this uh, um, low number of uh, animals. animals that, that, that yeah. are coming. Yeah. We hear that government is also doing something around um, a national ranch, sort of. Uh, have you heard anything about that? Yeah, uh, that is what I'm saying, that we subscribe to the government uh, flagship, mm. that uh, uh, there should be uh, 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 ranchings for animals railing. And that's why I said that we have even applied, we've, written, we've sent our proposals, we are looking forward to see what we can get. Uh, we, are, we are saying this because if we don't go into ranching, a the time they come, we will, we will not get animal to slaughter. Mm. Not now, but the time they come, we won't get animal to slaughter. Uh, um, during your annual general meeting, um, we realized one, one very critical thing that was referred to as uh, obsolete equipment. Yes, obsolete equipment. What was the challenge? Tell us about yes. that. The equipment has been there since installation, 1998. What type uh, of equipment? It, it, it was uh, uh, a grant from Canadian government uh, to Ghana government. And then Ghana government charged uh, uh, Senate, Social Security and Insurance Trust, National Insurance Trust, to put up uh, buildings for those uh, uh, plants. That's why I say about what came in. We have another one in Accra called Accra Abatua. The equipment has grown out of uh, 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 its age in the sense that even Canadian people don't have this sort of thing there again. The, the uh, uh, what do you call it? The place that they brought this thing from, they have it's collapsed. So we don't have any factory that they work. Formerly, when the ad, uh, items came or the equipment came, uh, they were doing repairs through, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a net 
we will call and they direct them. But now the, the factory is no more there. It's not in existence. So who is going to help you to do it? So uh, we are using our own uh, engineers okay. who are fabricating some uh, uh, parts for us to fix in when it gets broken. Wow. Yes. But the problem is, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's not like original Machines. machine. But what kind of impact does that have on the, uh, the work that, the processes that you do? The kind of machines? Ma ma maintenance cost. High, Very right? high, yes. Maintenance cost is very high. How much do you spend on maintenance on the, on the, the machines, on the equipment, for instance, let's say per month? Yeah. Oh, per month? Well, roughly, we may spend more than uh, uh, 100 and something thousand per month. Wow. Yes. Ment maintenance maintenance of, alone of for, that, for the equipment. What kind of equipment is that? I think you, you went inside there, you realize that it's a, a, a slaughtering equipment okay. where we start from uh, where we, they arrest the animal, slaughter it, and then horse it. Okay. okay. You see? And then on the line, if you are not careful, there are so many things on the line. And all the things are fabricated by our people here. Formerly, we used to have the original rulers. Okay. Now we don't have that one. These have been fabricated for us, and we are using it, and it's working all right anyway. But you see, it's not like original. And then we have a machine called um, Kaka Splitter, the one we use to dissect the animal the into animals, four parts. Yeah. They are all old. And the chest splitter, they are all old. You see the chest splitter that we used to cut, yeah. I mean, to uh, They are all old, so I don't know. Uh, and these are the things that we need to import, and it's not easy. Why are you uh, able to buy them? Uh, 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 they, they are all fans. You see, uh, that is why at the AGM, we were saying that uh, we needed uh, uh, infusion of the capital. They have to uh, uh, the, the shareholders have to put in more capital for us to work with. And you see, we, can't, we are not charging common street price here. Why? Uh, it's not easy to charge common street price. You see, this abattoir was set up to help people to get hygienic meat to eat. Uh, so, uh, when you want even to increase your slotting fee, it's not easy. There was a time we need to go to regional security council to fight for the increment. So it's not easy. Well, is it that when you increase it, it deters the, the, people yes, from... Yes, the, the butchers won't come and then they won't even allow you to. Uh, they will slaughter down. They will go and slaughter on the ground and oh, you can't do anything about it. And that, so, that is so also so easy. unhygienic. That, yes, that is also unhygienic and uh, we need to compromise and then come to Against, a certain yeah. uh, point. Uh, so now, a very, any animal we slaughter, it's 47 cities. You can imagine, 47 cities. And we have 17 stages on the line. Yeah. And any stage, we have about two people standing there. So by the time the carcass come outside for them to take it to the market, uh, look at the line we went there. You saw the line, 17 lines, uh, stages. So it's not easy. And uh, apart and from apart from not charging the commensurate prices, mm -hmm. what else is contributing to the losses? So because for five years, yes. that is too much. Yes, not charging commensurate prices at the same time. Uh, the, the maintenance cost is very high. The maintenance cost is very high. You see? And then we are not getting the number we, 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 to slaughter. Because we are not slaughtering below the average. Way below average. Yes. So that is why. But if we were to get even 200 animals to slaughter a day, we can break even. So now at the moment, they, they knew that we have to infuse some capital into abattoir before we can come up again because without the capital we don't we are not getting any money from anywhere so what we are sorting the number we are sorting the number that we are used to pay ourselves wow yes yeah, how has the low um, animal slaughtering impacted on your revenue generation you see we, we rely on the uh, uh, slaughter fees so the lesser you slaughter the less revenue you get that's the only revenue generation point. Yes. Yeah. So we are we are we have we have brought in marketing. Mm -hmm. We brought in marketing. In fact, uh, if not the marketing, one or two things will have even happened. Now marketing is feeding us now, because uh, you mean uh, the processing yeah, side of it. Yeah, the processing side. You know, we, we also market uh, some of the meat. We buy some from the butchers. We we'll put we we'll add uh, value, to, value to it and then we we'll sell. But we've been selling to. Uh, uh, mining companies, they have been coming for meat here. Even though the lockdown time, uh, we were among the food chain, so we were coming to office to work. 
But what happened was that uh, uh, we were not getting more animals to slaughter. Uh, because when you slaughter more, people don't come to market to buy. So uh, there was some time we were even uh, slaughtering about 60 animals, 70 animals. Uh, very, 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 very low. You see, so it, it's affected the company, actually. Are you impressed with the per capita meat consumption of, uh, of the Ghanaian people? Oh, at the moment, you see, uh, <laughs> it's going around that red meat is not good, red meat is not good. But you see, I, I, I promise you that we can't say red meat is not good. You see, there are printers in it. It, is, it depends upon how you use it. You see, uh, excess usage of some everything is bad. So you should know how. And red meat is not only one way. Ghanaians, we, we eat meat one way. We cook and we eat. We cook and we eat. But you see, we need to burn the oil in it. We plead with them that it isn't so. I mean, they should tell us the truth. And you think that is also affecting the Yeah, it's affecting the company, yes. It's affecting uh, slaughtering in the sense that uh, a lot of people have stopped eating red meat. Wow. Uh, a lot of people have stopped eating it. Now, that is why the board is now thinking of having a processing, a very good processing plant where we can even can meat and do all these things. You see the, the, the area around here behind me. Yeah. Uh -huh. We are marked that place to put up a processing plant. And uh, they are working on it. And that you also you still need money. Yeah, we still need money. That's the problem. So they put forward at the AGM that they are they are they are, they are appealing to the shareholders uh, to, to, to see to it and then find a way to let have a, a processing plant. Because uh, if we have a processing plant and then we have our own ranching. Yeah. A very big one. We can we can do this thing on our own and then be selling meat and then be, be, be processing some of the meat. You see, like the other areas, when I went to Meli, I came here, I went to Meli. We went to Meli and then one, one farmer will have an, a land more than what we have here. Yeah. 17 acres. They have over 100 and then 400 acreage. And one person, and he's having a cut on it. Here we don't have settings. Um, and and, and with, um, has the abattoir considered rearing its own animals? That's what I said. We started with small one. How many? At, you know, we have about 30. But the place uh, is on a Kawiye road. Uh, it's a very small area. That's why I said we have even applied for uh, 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 this. Uh, uh, rearing for, rearing for food, food and, and, uh, and, uh, and export. export. Uh, what we are doing is that uh, we are seeking, we are looking for a vast land. Uh, you see, all these things, if the, the board had a chance of going in for loan, a bigger loan, uh -huh, that would let them go forward to do this. Thing. But when you go, you know, in Ghana, anything that you want to take is money. Anything that you want to take is money. But so if you don't have the money, you can't go ahead to do anything. How much do you need now? Oh, I can't. If they can infuse about, say, uh, about, 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 about say, uh, a million or two into it, it will change the face of abattoir. A million dollars? Uh, I'm talking of cities. A million cities or yes. two? Because what I'm saying is that we need to change a lot of things. A lot of things. The processing lines. Yes. That the plant. equipment, yes, the plants there. They are weak. And we, oh, not a single day that we will work that you we, we won't have something to repair. So, we know that the Public Health Act, for instance, compels everybody to ensure that any animal they want to slaughter goes to um, a slaughterhouse. A proper place. A proper slaughterhouse, a proper place to be slaughtered. Um, I'm not sure that is being complied. <laughs> I think you are, you, are, you, are, you are in Ghana. Yes, it's true. Uh, some, some, some slaughter somewhere, they, they feel they can slaughter. Here, we have veterinary doctors. They do post-mortem anti-mortem before the meat, the carcass will go out. So we, we are sure of uh, this is free animal. And where, the, where we meet any disease, I'm sure when you enter the place, they told you, when you meet any disease animal, the do doctors will not allow the meat to go. The carcass will be destroyed here. That's why um, a lot of people don't break their animals here. Oh, but, 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 but if you go and slaughter down, so we are asking the public to eat meat that comes from abattoir. Wholesome meat. Yeah, wholesome meat. Well, when you eat, you see, when you eat meat from outside, eh, 
that. They may have veterinary doctors or not. That one I can't be sure of myself. Yeah. But here, there, yes. How, how do you think this um, uh, policy or directive from the Act should be implemented? Because, you know, we, uh, especially when there are festive occasions, yes. a lot of people slaughter any animal at all, even yeah. goats. I, I, I think that one rests on local government, mm. the assemblies. It's the, it's, the, it's the work of the assemblies to see to it that these things are done in a proper place. Uh, Do you think that to, is possible? Yes, they are, they, they, they are in charge of this. They are in charge of all these slaughtering uh, uh, animals and all this. There are some work. Oh, yes, you see, one goat, somebody will pick it and then slaughter it at home. Yes. We, we wouldn't know because you don't, you don't have an eye to see what exactly. that's there. So uh, something wrong with the animal. So that one there, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Not, I mean, uh, not all animals that people send to slaughter at the abattoir or a uh, uh, hygienic place. Yeah. But we, we are appealing to the public. Yes. That even if you have one animal, one dog, uh, what do you call it, sheep or goat that you want to slaughter, please go come to Kumasi Abattoir. How much are we charging you? It's about 30 cities. Huh? 30 cities. And then uh, when you slaughter, you are, you are good at 30 cities. How much are you losing? Well, we use gas also to change it for you. We are not using ties. We use, Kumasi Abattoir, you can, I think you went there. Yep, yep, we are so. even extending the gas area so that we can get all a lot of people to come in so so i don't see why people will stay at home and if you want to be uh, healthy all the time slaughter at the commercial abattoir let me tell you when you see a meat or uh, carcass and then you see that it's very reddish then it was slaughtered on the ground wow say, say that again but see, when you see carcass that is reddish yes. too much blood inside you know ours we horse it we drain the blood at a point in time we have to stay there for about five minutes all the blood will come down and any stage that goes we use water to clean the, to wash the place to wash the place so by the time the carcass come outside for them to take we see the meat being white it means all the blood has come down thank you very much you're welcome so we've been speaking to the managing director of the kumase abattoir mr joe Owusubwedi. And he's been telling us so much about the Kumasi Abattoir, uh, the meat production and uh, meat processing as well, and how wholesome meat is uh, packaged to the consuming public, and some advice he has been given as well. My name is Prince Apia. Thank you for joining us.